around for two. <laughs> Isn't that cute? He thinks he's one of the models, Inc. <laughs> <laughs> Get that cat out of the way. Uh, that's it. You know, I was wondering uh, what was going to happen when I finally got to one of those shows that, like, just has, like, no theme song. Welp. I guess while I wait for the next transition, I'll have to use my very poor conversation skills. Hey. How you doing? That's it. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yeah, that's it. That's all I got. No, I know, I know, man. I used the great value one, whatever. Just, what you want from me, all right? Slacker Cats was an adult animated series created by uh, these two. Produced for fucking ABC Family, nonetheless. Running for 12 episodes between 2007 and 2009. It's, um, uh, it's uh, Garfield, Garfield meets Seinfeld. Seinfeld. Nice. Just what I always wanted. watching this when it aired i was kind of obsessed with it for a brief second man i ain't gonna lie i don't know back then i just i love the jokes i love the style i love that this somehow ended up on abc family i haven't seen anyone talk about it and it's not like it's anything like incredibly profound or anything but i don't know i think i think it'd be cool to show it some love i'm just gonna post and remind everybody of what my next video is gonna be This, this can't be. Fuck y'all! Go ask for get this slacker cat video. You don't know, like it. Nah, hey, y'all niggas up. <laughs> nah, I ain't want this, bro. I want a Daria. Where the Daria video at? Nigga, Daria want me to do slacker cats. Fuck you. Slacker cats rolls. Okay, I, already, I already know this shit finna flop. I'm just finna throw every cameo possible in this shit. Fuck it. Anybody that ain't tuned in, y'all missed out. Oh, we're on Tariq's channel. That means we get to curse as much as we want. Hell damn shit, fuck. What's what all this shit on the wall? This shit look like Tariq struggling hard on a multiple choice know, question. Like, like goddamn, pick an ass already. You fucking up the scan, Tron. That's actually still gross, depending on how you look at it. What the fuck is Slacker Cat? Tariq, man, you... I, how much longer is this going to be? Until I'm not angry anymore, you fucking crash test dummy. <laughs> This ain't televised, they telling lies, but promise I won't We've been patronized, they taking lives, I'm on my way home Relax my mind about half the time, I'm watching cartoons for knocks How I'm locked in my home, of course they resemble my skin When I watch two, hypnotizing, panic, how I follow through the vibes Okay, Dreaming mama's proud as if she looks through his penny size I'm a man of the house like Oscar, you deceive, I believe need Oscar James Earl when I speak, I'm a fossa, gotta swerve in the streets, never block a psycho Feel more, just try to make you feel more Through the halls, I felt scorns, looking at me Cause I don't like what you like, you feel too should have smacked your lights, slick back, you ain't seen pimping before For the stars I shoot pimping, no boy, you best set the score Real quick, today's video is actually brought to you by Atlas VPN. It's impossible to be on the internet by now and not know what a VPN is. Atlas VPN was created to make the internet more accessible and secure for everyone. Currently, it has more than 4 million users worldwide and you could actually end up being one of them. Atlas encrypts your data and hides your virtual location. When you connect to a server or VPN, your device is given a new IP and DNS address. All of the traffic is encrypted and routed towards the VPN server. When the traffic arrives at the server, the VPN server decrypts the information and allows the traffic to access the desired location. I just did a video on Hi Hi Puffy I'm a Yumi and like a week after that they just decided to drop the whole show on HBO Max Latin America. See Netflix, Amazon Prime, Disney Plus, they all have like geo restrictions due to like licensing rights. But with Atlas VPN, you could watch it easy and any other show they got over there that we don't. It's dope. All you gotta do is sign in, reload the site, and boom. Gotcha, bitch. But the thing that makes Atlas stand out is their data breach monitor feature. All you gotta do is put your email address in and the tool scans the internet to see if it ended up in any recorded data breaches or data dumps that include like like emails, names, passwords, or any other sensitive information, <laughs> like your search history. There's so much porn! Enabling locations keeps you in the loop of things like this. This gives you a heads up to change your password before anybody has a chance to actually steal any information. Atlas VPN is supported on any device and provides a 30-day money-back guarantee for all subscription purchases. Hey, if you're feeling all that, stand up! Click our special link in the description and get Atlas VPN for $1.99 per month for a three-year subscription. Again, just click our special link in the description for $1.99 per month 
for a three-year subscription. Yeah, C minor. Card captor. Whoa. Sheesh. Sheesh. This is a certified. All right. Yeah. Hey, just cause I tell you I love you, that don't mean that it's true. You been searching all your life to know what it mean to be you in this What the hell is Slacker Cat? Shut up! Slacker Cats is about two cats, I guess, Buckley and Eddie. Buckley stays with his owner Louise, and Eddie stays with Dan. In this universe, humans and cats completely understand each other. Because all the humans have these little cat nose things, I'm inclined to believe that everyone's a pussy. <laughs> Best channel on YouTube, huh? I still got some time to click off. I think Quentin just dropped that new Victoria shit. Buckley and Eddie aren't even really slackers. Like, these niggas be doing mad shit. The show follows them doing mad shit. So I sat down, right, to talk about Buckley as a character. But then I read the wiki and was fascinated by their description. So, uh, here we go. He is clever by cat standards, but he thinks he's much more clever than he really is. Which causes he and Eddie to encounter a lot of trouble. He secretly wants to be human, feeling life is limited as a cat. His best friend is Eddie, who is often the cause of his mishaps. Buckley is also the constant nemesis of Mrs. Boots for reasons that remain unknown. He's in love with his owner, Louise, and plans on marrying her, but she doesn't return his feelings. Huh? How do you like me now? Mr. Buckley, sir, I think you have a very small penis. What? Niggas talking about the puffy video unfocused. Motherfucker, I'll show you unfocused. Oh, yeah, you know, that is one thing that they do. I forgot about that. This nigga Buckley want to fuck his owner. Oh, D. <laughs> Buckley? And honestly, my nigga, like really, really, truly, can't blame him. Say, uh, <laughs> say, I can't blame him. Said he loved me. You. He wants me. Quicker than that, Nicholas. I used to watch this shit so often. Like this fourth episode, it's been so many years, but I swear I could tell you every beat that's gonna happen right before it does on some Nasso Raven Vision shit. Talk to me, I talk back. You see what I'm saying? Hey man, I ain't gonna lie, bro. They just uh, they kind of just let Raven say whatever on this shit, bro. I don't know why you wanna put my spirit in a big car. I am not the rich. Sick world, go on, name one sicker. Come on, I'll wait. Aw, oh, man, Eddie is my dude, man. I love my nigga Eddie. He's kind of like the designated cool friend. He's not really a good friend of Buckley, but it's fine because I don't think they ever really play their relationship earnestly. They acknowledge just how trash he is super early on. Come on, the least you can do is give me a bit of your food and let me stay for one night. No, this is the least I can do. Alright, so uh, out of all the things I remembered about Eddie, him being a deadbeat daddy was not at the top of the list. Lying punk ass bum! You Listen, said you been done. Girl, I ended I'm up trying, with six of your damn you. kittens. And what you, you ever shut, done for them? You, Nothing. Well, you, you can look after them today because I'm out of here. I, I'm going what? to the mall with Charlene can, for I some meantime. time. Oh, you go, girl. Remember, uh, this is the show that I... Uh, wanted to do the video on. Remember that? In a world where cats can just walk around and talk, I guess I never considered that they'd actually still be, like, neutered. But that's, like, 100% a thing in this universe. It's kind of fucked up, man. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah, some good times, boys. We had great times. And then I know that sometimes I took you guys for granted. I didn't always wash you as often as I should have, but I was gonna do this, man, but I love y'all, man! I ain't gonna never get y'all, y'all my dog! I just wanna cut that nigga's nuts off! Sinbad is so damn good as Eddie, holy shit. He's a great voice actor, we gotta get bro in more shit besides like, a uh, Rel. Y'all ain't watch Rel, nigga, I watched Rel. Did I like Rel? Mind your fucking business. Uh, my love is asleep. I will wake him with the melodious sound of my woodblock. My love, my love, I will wait for my love. Comb in my beautiful hair, comb in my beautiful hair. Oh. Every time the weekend comes, yeah, I know that it Okay, so like, uh, this is Tabitha. She's like this little loose cannon, lovable, dumb, homeless cat. So many adjectives, I know, but I like, I swear she's funny. I think Awestruck Vox on the round table used to want her fucker too, but I don't know. Hey, just stop. <laughs> 
They let a lot of fucked up shit happen to Tabitha, son. They let her play in traffic. They fucking sell her to animal testing. This poor pink cat. This poor pink psychotic cat. That was real relaxing. Huge shout out to Kirsten Warren who plays her. She's so good in this. Uh, I guess uh, Hawaii. Oh. They're not Niagara Falls. Maybe. It's just, it's my wedding too. And I always wanted to see Niagara Falls. If you end up watching this, Tabitha and Eddie are definitely the two standouts. Almost any interaction between these two are guaranteed to laugh out of me. And uh, where do you see yourself in 10 years time? Dead. Well, I'll be dead. We're cats. I mentioned it a little earlier, but like there is Mrs. Boots, who's voiced by Niecy Nash. Mrs. Boots. You know, I was thinking, where's Mr. Boots? <laughs> Eddie, as you know, there is no Mr. Boots. I did not choose my name. It's a whimsy, which derives from the A deformity I asked you not to mock. They bust the balls all the time about this shit in the show. He kind of deserves it because she's like the rich cat that treats Eddie and Buckley like shit. But sometimes they deserve it too, so you're not really on anyone's side. You just kind of let them get their shit off repeatedly. That where is Mr. Boots shit definitely peaks right here. This one killed me. And what does Mr. Boots think about all this? There is no Mr. Boots! What the fuck? Yeah, these are two cats here, uh, wow. too. They very clearly want to top my boy Eddie off something fierce. Care to tan with us? Could, but we don't have lotion. We have to use yours. Rub it into each other's bodies oh. right here in front of you. I mean, you have little Bruh. choice but to watch us rub it in slowly oh like. I'll Go ahead, hard. please. Go ahead and what? Rub it on each other? Why would we want to do that, you perv? Man, <laughs> these cats stick as hell, boy, man. I'm finna turn this shit off. You are the hottest cat on the street right now. Ooh. And there's Duper, who I don't have any notes on, so here's a clip of him climbing into a dead cat's body. Uh, this is one episode, right? I don't even, I don't even remember which one it is. And in it, Louise tried to force Buckley to breed with a different cat, but Buddy calls it sex slavery, which kinda is honestly <laughs> kind of fucked up. The type of shit we do to cats. Now that I really think about it, it's kind of the most fun part about this show, besides the characters, the fact that they take these seemingly small, commonplace house cat things and make these cats react to them in real time with their real emotions. I think that's kind of what House Broken's going for, that newish cartoon on Fox. But I really like the approach they go with here, where like the humans are understanding all of the cats. Things turn into conversations, everything's not like segmented off. Say like in House Broken, right? It's kind of like Rugrats, you know? The animals are just trying to figure out why the humans do what they do. It's all just speculation. Nobody can understand anybody, yada, yada, yada. But also a big difference is we never get to actually spend any time with the humans in House Broken like we do with the adults in Rugrats. Now that's not to say that House Broken is bad by any means. I actually, uh, I, 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 I actually, I don't, I don't think I actually fully understand how I feel about House Broken. I'm just keeping it up. But you know, that is me saying that personally, I feel like I prefer this approach. She says different, I guess. I don't know, man. Like. I have a cat now, and I feel like I am obligated to find this kind of shit funny. 50 cent a stroke, y'all! 50 cent! Hey, uh, I'd like to stroke the kitty. I got a cat, but she doesn't want to be touched anymore. Last episode of Slacker Cats is so bizarre. Like I said, there's only 12 of these. It looks like they like produced just like one season and they split it in half. That actually happens way more than you think. But yeah, the last episode is pretty fucking nuts. I actually had to look up what year this damn show came out. It's about Buckley going and turning off literally all of the internet because uh, niggas was rude to him on his blog and the fucking city just goes berserk. Like, is this like how we saw ourselves back in 2008? I swear it, I don't know. It just feels like the internet Internet and our dependency on it is just so damn new but i guess we really have been struggling with this for like two decades now i don't know overall man i still think slacker cats is cool man i don't know it's not flawless or relentlessly funny or anything like that but uh it's a, it's a good time like if this is like your bop you know what i mean oh uh, yeah actually bounce okay no no i mean get out 
Every movie review, I usually just write they showed the hammer or they did not show the hammer, Didn't depending show the on hammer. what the movie. <laughs> hey, yo, enough, man. What you got to drink up in here, man? I'm thirsty. Oh, man. Okay, so believe it or not, this is the Slacker Cats pilot animated by. The Will Vincent Studio, which is just Leica in a different coat of paint. Leica actually ended up producing the whole show. The logo is still the end of every episode. Look how fucking cool this thing looks. Yes, that Leica Studios. Yes, that Leica Studios. You can go and pick your job off the ground. You'd be surprised what studios animated the most random shit throughout their history. I feel like if this shit actually came out like this, it may have got talking about a little bit more, but it would not have escaped them celebrity deathmatch allegations. Definitely looks expensive, but it's pretty fucking cool. It basically is just a conversation from the top of the first episode, except it expands into like more of a do or die situation. Eddie, do you, do you ever fake a her? Sure, I don't know if I get any sleep. I can't. I want to sometimes. You know, Louise is stroking me, but- Not quite in the right place. And I want to show her she's- She's giving me pleasure, but it comes out kind of- <laughs> So basically, Buckley has to get the pager out of Eddie, or else Louise will or come and TV. chop his nuts off. Nice, count me in, I got next. When the show found his way to getting picked up, it switched over to Flash, which is probably for the best considering that it's more cost efficient. I mean, it's it's early Flash, so like the rigs be like breaking more than Curtis blow out this motherfucker. They be fucking- Break into electric boogaloo like shit. Bricks in a box, breaks on the car. And you know, sometimes they won't like redraw the background and they'll just kind of like zoom in instead. It's pretty noticeable nowadays, but I could see this flying if this was airing on like a SD TV. But you know, when it's not doing when it's not doing all of that, some of this character acting is crazy good. Look at some of this shit. It's a really nice touch that like instead of just like having the character stand there sometime, they're like have them doing like actual cat shit. Express I love these expressions, man. I love that I've covered three Flash cartoons in a row on this channel, and they're all stylistically totally different, but the expressions are always something I end up praising. The staging is still kind of bit for like 4x3. This is before all TVs were HD, but like they knew that they were like trying to bring it in. So everything is more staged so it can fit in both. So nothing important's cut off uh, if you're watching this on your Lightning McQueen VHS TV. Well, how about that body swap movie? 45 year old man swap bodies with a 43 year old man. Imagine the fun, Eddie. <gasps> you get the biggest popcorn I got now. Yes, sir. Nigga, where's the meat? Why do cartoons keep doing shit like this? Just where's draw the, the dick, like Big Mouth. This isn't Big Mouth. You're not gonna see it. Just draw the dick. I don't. Just draw it. Drawing the schlong can't be that hard, my nigga. Son, just give me, give me. Watch this. I'll do it my damn self. Shut the fuck up. Seeing people call this like a, a a Family Guy clone, like fam, it's practically written on the fucking wiki. Not even comparable in writing, aside from like the normal mid 2000s. Oh fuck, that's mad racist joke that you hear every once in a while. You shouldn't be out in the open. We have to hide from Chinese people. Oh my gosh, this is kind of just gonna be like a simple review thing, but honestly. These claims came up so much that the bitch just turned into the whole thesis. Y'all niggas, y'all got me tight, man. I ain't gonna lie. What exactly makes this a Family Guy clone? The art design? Look at how these characters move. Look how loose this character acting is. If you watch this for more than five seconds, you'd see that. I love Family Guy more, more than, than life, life itself. itself. And I think it looks great. I want to make that very, very clear. But I'll be the first to tell you that character acting isn't part of the reasons why. The term clone is just so dismissive. It provokes this like one-to-one -one energy. When I think clone, right, I think of like some of those Scooby-Doo one-offs. So like Paradise PD or Gucci Man. Not Slacker Cats, my nigga. This just happens sometimes when shows share crew members. Slacker Cats definitely started off stop motion, but afterwards the main cast was redesigned by uh, Seth Kersley who a grand majority of the internet might know as the Kingdom Hearts animated series plug, but a nigga like me, 
Okay, no, this is a director of one family guy. Or uh, the director of Eight Crazy Nights, but that's if you're really trying to operate on hard mode. Leave me the fuck alone! And I think because the show is animated in his style, I think it might lead people to believe that he created it and that it was always supposed to look like this, but neither one of those is the case. Follows similar design philosophy, sure, right? But like, what about tone? What about structure? What about the way that it approached its jokes and characters? Shit, what about the way that it's literally staged and animated? It's it's literally not the same. But, but I, I knew, knew you, you wouldn't, wouldn't listen. listen. So I asked my own boy Daft Pina to talk a little bit more about this. I don't feel like drawing him, so here. Sunsets in the west, yes we know this. I'm unsettled east side with the road and I'm cruising. The core concept to what makes a Family Guy clone, uh, clone, essentially dates back to what Family Guy was based on, multicam sitcoms. Basically what this means is there's a set with separate cameras always recording, with the team cutting on cue to focus on a character or two, most often in front of a live studio audience. This concept first started with American series Mary Kay and Johnny, but was revolutionized with I Love Lucy. Kung Fu invented the lighting technique which utilized overhead lights and better cable management, making it easier for the dollies the cameras are on to move around without much worry about tripping over them. This technique also made it easier to film any angle of said action, with use of a dimming board to change lighting and scenes. Single can sitcoms follow a more standard film recording operation, with retakes and breaks to change lighting being more common. With that in mind, the Flintstones and Wait Till Your Father Gets Home were early examples of an animated multi-cam sitcom, even if there weren't multiple cameras. Also to note the use of animating shadows are seldom done, because A, it takes more time to draw, and B, emulating a multi-cam set means there's an inherent flat look to lighting in most scenes. As of every camera filming at once, you have to ensure that all the actors are lit perfectly, no matter the angle. So a main difference between The Simpsons and Family Guy is that one is emulating a single cam set and the other a multicam one. The latter in recent seasons making it more obvious they're capturing the feel of a stage with a more flat style of directing. Further noting what makes Family Guy, well Family Guy, is the use of cutaways of course, but also the lack of movements when characters aren't focused on, apart from blinking here and there. Another thing to note is that Family Guy doesn't utilize rigs and it's actually drawn pose to pose making sure the characters are as on model as possible. It's impressive stuff, so if you've ever asked why do primetime adult animation shows always look like Family Guy, it's just because it's trying to emulate a multi-cam sitcom format. Family Guy just being a good blueprint of that. You can even have shows that look more like Rick and Morty, but feel directed in the same way as Family Guy, like hoops. But that's because while styles change over the years, the basic format is there. This was why there are a lot of Family Guy inspired cartoons in the 2010s, due to the success of Family Guy, American Dad, and even The Cleveland Show. While in more recent times, shows want to be based more on Rick and Morty, because it's Easy. But no matter what, you can never truly escape the family-oriented sitcom, as that's a staple of culture around the world. I mean, the longest-running anime is Saze san a family sitcom that's been running since 1969. So this brings us to a big question. Is Slacker Cats a Family Guy clone? No. They change camera angles a lot more often, the characters are constantly moving, and the characters aren't rigs. So I would say it's Family Guy-esque, as it does have the DNA mix within it, though that's more due to the many years of the shows that came before it, all boiling down to a multi-cam sitcom. But this time with cats. Thanks for that, Daft. Hey, uh, before you go, uh, how do you how do you feel about Slacker Cats? Oh, well, I think the tone's a little over the place and even some of the characters- Alright, alright, alright. Huh. Man, that guy is only good at one thing being my friend. Oh. Oh. I mean, oh. You oh. and I, T-Y, oh. oh. that's unity. She's sick of that song on how it's so long. Thought he worked his until I handled my biz. There I is, major pain like Damon Wayne's. Low down dirty even like his brother <laughs> Keenan. Say it one more time. At last, you're becoming a crafty consumer. I'll take eight. Every day. So, Slacker Cats ran for 12 episodes. I guess it had two broadcast seasons or whatever, but I had never even seen the back half of these because they just do them online instead of on TV. This shit was DOA, man. I ain't even gonna hold you. The marketing was weird. People didn't know if, like, it was for kids or not. I wouldn't be surprised if this was part of some kind of, like, failed rebrand for ABC Family like uh, TBS with Close Enough. It was kind of fucked off the walk-in, to be honest. It never had a chance to grow. I guess uh, the thing I learned when putting this one together is just how frustrating the connotation of calling something a clone could be. Even when joking, it invites this dismissive or disposable nature to the content in question's existence. We look at it as sheerly existing for the purpose of dick riding whatever came before it. 
trying to recatch lightning in a bottle, I guess. You know, I just, I, I don't know. I, I, me personally, I just don't see that in Slacker Cats. I'm sorry. It's animated different. The characterization isn't the same. The tone. Nobody knows that because they only take one glance and look away. Do you actually remember Slacker Cats? Then remember Slacker Cats. Don't call it an NFT. <laughs> or a Family Guy clone, remember it for what it actually was. It and the people who made it ain't do nothing to hurt nobody. So why make fun of their efforts? I don't understand. Especially if you haven't seen this shit in over a decade. Calling Slacker Cats a Family Guy clone does nothing but tell me, okay, that you haven't watched Family Guy since Brian died. I, who knows, man? Maybe all Slacker Cats needed was a little bit of love to bust it all down and let people give it another look. Maybe this is what I've always needed. A platform, a chance for the world to learn about the real me. But he can't be the only one holding the fandom down. Ah, oh, nice. Nice, bro. I still had fun with Slacker Cats. It still made me laugh. I think some of the stuff they were able to pull off with their limitations is really impressive for the time. It could be dumb, it could be stupid, kind of gross and disturbing sometimes. Like, I don't expect all y'all to come out loving this shit. Like, not at all. No way. But I don't know. If something like this is your bag, it's a good time. Wow, terrific, Tariq. You just reviewed Slacker Cats. What are you gonna do now? Probably fuck. <laughs> Plus, man, you said we was gonna do some cartoons from my era. How come you haven't talked about biker mice from Mars and SWAT cats and Captain Bucky O'Hare? You know, that real hot shit from the mid to early 90s. I feel... There was a car just passed. I feel a strong sense of ageism uh, in this place. And you know what? I'm just gonna leave. Uh, I can't think of any other ad libs. <laughs> I'm just tired. But I think that was a good one. Just showing people Captain Bucky O'Hare should be enough for a good gag. All right. Peace. <laughs> so I barely know what this is, but I ain't even going to tell bro that I put this at the end of the video. So uh, everybody, please just send them random pictures of this cartoon, man. Just don't even give any context. Yo, I ain't going to lie. I'm more like a great white so to come I was really frightened and you were there for me I don't need love I need some head you tight like a glove pop it on that you know I like the uh, uh, dip and I dash in the white and the uh, uh, and it rain you ain't letting it sing like with a tune baby who's and I fuck up my mood is this how normal people feel y'all feel sorry for each other how the hell do y'all get anything done I hope you die I hope we all die just to make sure you die but whatever happens you and me know there's only one buck Oh my god, oh man, that's my <laughs> nigga. Oh uh, yeah, uh, fuck him. <laughs>